Did you know Metal Gear Solid 5's Chapter 3 might actually exist? Before we go any further, we want to let you know that Did You Know Gaming talked to some former Konami employees who gave some exclusive insight into the subject. But first, we need to cover some background. The story starts September 1st, 2015, the day Metal Gear Solid 5 hit store shelves. The game's campaign is divided into two chapters. The first 31 missions comprise Chapter 1, Revenge, and the last 19 missions are Chapter 2, Race. But two weeks after the game launched, a data miner known as Saladin found an unused title card for a third chapter called Peace. Nobody really knew what it meant though. Maybe Chapter 3 featured more story missions scrapped in development, or maybe it was never meant as anything more than just a title card. Like how after Death Stranding's last story mission, a title card for Episode 15, Tomorrow is in Your Hands, appears on screen. Letting the player know that they finished the story, but can still run around the sandbox completing special deliveries. Or maybe, the truth is somewhere in between. We'll get back to that in a minute though, because around the same time, something else was found in the game's data. An 8 minute cutscene that was only meant to be seen if players in MGS5 Online achieved a nuke free world. A month after this discovery, Konami announced details of the secret nuclear disarmament event. Basically, Konami said that all nuclear weapons on a particular platform, whether it be on PlayStation 3, Xbox One, or PC, PlayStation 4, have to be disarmed and the nuke count dropped to zero. The cutscene already discovered through data mining was meant to play if, and only if, fans actually achieved that goal. In Did You Know Gaming's last Metal Gear video, there were a lot of comments saying disarmament had already been achieved, but sadly that's not true. It's not entirely true, that is. The game's online mode, players build forward operating bases, or FOBs, that can house up to 60 nuclear missiles. You can invade other players' FOBs and steal their nukes, either to keep for yourself or to dismantle for the sake of peace. To achieve a nucleus world, everyone, and everyone has to mutually agree to disarm, or failing that, some players have to invade each other's bases to actually force peace at the end of a gun. The core message of the series has always been Kojima's opposition to nuclear weapons, and according to the man himself, the struggle for disarmament is the entire point of the game. Once fans realized this was their mission from Kojima, a subreddit sprang up called Metal Gear Philanthropy, determined to do exactly just that. An opposing subreddit was also formed at the same time, the Metal Gear Patriots, who dedicated themselves to making sure the philanthropists failed. Everyone had already seen the disarmament cutscene on YouTube, and by then, in the months that followed, Konami started hinting that a legit disarmament was actually the key to unlocking Chapter 3. Like this tweet from their official account in late 2015 saying, The truth can be found for peace, with a capital P, which they followed up with references to the philanthropist and patriot subreddits. Kojima made some tweets of his own which encouraged fans to rid the world of nuclear weapons. These sort of tweets continued for months, like when the official Metal Gear account even told fans the game contained, quote, less than four chapters. When Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain were bundled together onto one disc for the definitive edition, a fan lamented that it wouldn't actually include chapter three. Then Konami's Robert Peeler hinted that the definitive edition still, quote, contains the same nuclear disarmament goals as the initial release. So, dot dot dot? Another fan told Robert that he was full of it, but Robert insisted he was not. Another year came and went with the philanthropist still not even close to abolition. They got a shot of adrenaline when Konami shared a fan's tweet that told everyone to disarm, and that it was the only way to unlock Chapter 3. This was the most direct language Konami had used yet, and the message seemed clear. Lots of groups sprang up around this time, all determined to rid the world of nukes to unlock Chapter 3, like the Never Be Game Over subreddit with thousands of members. On February 2nd, 2018, the disarmament cutscene was triggered in the Steam version of the game. There was a brief celebration from fans, but they quickly realized that there were still thousands of nukes left on the server. Konami announced that they were opening an investigation, then returned a couple days later to announce that disarmament wasn't legitimate, and the cutscene was actually triggered by a glitch. The cutscene was triggered a few more times over the years, but every time Konami conducted an investigation, they then announced that the disarmaments were illegitimate. Kojima even sent out a mysterious tweet saying that the Metal Gear saga was not over yet, and the search for peace remained fruitless. But all of that changed in 2020, when the coronavirus swept the world and left billions of people locked in their homes for months on end. And that's when one individual, known as the Hung Horse, took advantage of the situation to build a new army of abolitionists and positioned himself as their leader. They called themselves the Anti-Nuke Gang, and we recently spoke with Hung Horse to get his side of the story, and he said, I formed the group once the lockdown restrictions happened in early 2020. I lost both of my jobs because of the pandemic, since they were considered non-essential business. 
businesses. So I figured more people would be in the same boat as me. And after making the group, barely anything got done because of the low numbers. So I decided to try data mining the game in order to inspire others to spread word of the group and found a few things most people skimmed over, like unused music soundtracks from Mission 43. My plan seemed to have worked. Numbers built up rather quickly, hitting somewhere over 100 members in May. And at this point, the PlayStation 3 was 13 years old. Not as many people were using it compared to newer platforms, which meant that the PS3 server had fewer nukes and actually made for an easier target. There were almost 20,000 nukes on the Steam server, but only 800 on PS3. So everyone in the anti-nuke gang who didn't actually have a PS3 bought one and swore that they'd achieve a true disarmament, whatever it took. They worked in shifts around the clock to invade other players' FOBs and steal their nukes. No nuclear program will go unseen. Someone manages to build another nuke. We'll be there to shut them down. And for a brief moment on July 28, 2020, they finally did it. They got the new count down to zero. The cutscene was triggered and word spread like wildfire that five years after the game's launch, peace had finally been achieved. The story was celebrated on practically every gaming site, from Eurogamer to Games Radar and even Vice. Hung Horse was interviewed by Ars Technica where he and his gang were celebrated as heroes. Kojima retweeted the story himself, twice actually, on both his English and Japanese accounts. That was a proud moment for me and the boys, Hunk Horse told Did You Know Gaming. Just as they'd done before, Konami announced that they were opening an investigation to determine if it was legitimate. But instead of a few days, this time Konami's investigation actually dragged on for months. The anti-nuke gang were waiting restlessly, hoping to finally see what was hiding behind the curtain. Then finally, three months later, Konami announced the disarmament didn't count because of, quote, improper conduct. They banned one of the gang's members and said that they were taking countermeasures to prevent it from ever happening again. The anti-nuke gang was crushed. Konami never revealed the details of the gang's improper conduct. But Hung Horse put it like this. We ran into what can only be defined as an invincible set of nukes that do not belong to any base. If you're familiar with the MGS5 FOB system, a nuke is always placed on an FOB after a player makes it. But there were 40 or so of these invincible nukes that didn't have FOB to belong to. They simply existed without FOBs, and we call them phantom nukes. There's simply no way to get rid of them in-game, and they're actually on every single server. The reason the phantom nukes exist is likely due to when players start a new save in Metal Gear Solid 5 or when they're banned. Their offline assets get reset, but not their online assets. Anyways, the number sat at 40 for quite a few weeks before our programmer, Steffer, momentarily disabled the refresh count on the server for a solid minute, actually allowing us to achieve disarmament legitimately for the first time ever. If it actually wasn't for Steph, it would have never happened, and we'd have only gotten down to 40. The unnamed gang member that Konami banned, as it turned out, was Stefferp. Using his hacking skill, Steph would later show the gang that Konami had disabled the cutscene from ever getting triggered again. Basically, they changed a 1 to a 0 in the game's code, and not just on PS3, on every platform. Even if a completely legitimate disarmament were to happen today, the cutscene's coded to never play again. That was the countermeasure Konami alluded to at the end of their investigation. So after months of fighting for peace, the gang threw in the towel and their morale was shattered. The hung horse told Did You Know Gaming, the majority of us gave up fighting the good fight because we had all learned that disarmament is rigged. I think the reason it took Konami so long to investigate the PS3 disarmament is because it began with a legitimate effort in getting rid of nuclear weapons, but ended with 40, the Phantom Nukes, being taken out immediately. It probably confused them for quite a while, but I suppose it was easier for them to label it a false disarmament than it is for them to fix or acknowledge the Phantom Nuke bug. Countless members tried messaging them about the Phantom Nukes, and as far as I know, they've done nothing about it. Therefore, achieving a legitimate disarmament under Konami's rules is literally impossible. Almost two years have passed since every nuke was purged from the PS3 server. The Hung Horse is still the leader of the anti-nuke gang, but a lot of their members deserted when they realized that the game was rigged. They played us like a damn fiddle! Give it back! This isn't right, that was ours! Konami announced that they were going to shut down the PS3 server later this month, and presumably every other server someday in the not-too-distant future. And they quit bothering to release official new counts years ago. The Hung Horse told Did You Know Gaming, After seeing all of this, it seems pretty obvious that disarmament is the key to something spectacular, right? I could sit here and theorize all day, but the truth is that nobody knows. The most popular opinion seems to be that Chapter 3 is hidden behind the disarmament achievement, and if done legitimately, it'd explain why Konami always has to investigate each disarmament armament that happens. Him and his gang have been trying in vain to plead with Konami to fix the Phantom New glitch and bring it to the attention of the Metal Gear community, hoping if enough stink gets raised, Konami might actually
really listen. But without community support, there's simply nothing 100 fans can do against a multi-billion dollar corporation who's rigged the game that they're actually playing. Metal Gear fans have given years of their life to a pursuit of peace. So come on, Konami, give them a chance to find out what's behind the curtain. It's a pretty cool story, huh? The little guys against the mega corporation, David versus Goliath, all they want is peace. But what if I told you that it was propaganda? An elaborate cover story propagated by the anti-nuke gang to make themselves out to be the good guys. Everything we told you so far is true. But Metal Gear fans know that sometimes propaganda can be made up entirely of truth. But it's the facts that are omitted that make it propaganda. It wasn't until we were almost done making this video, back in February, that we found out the gang's story wasn't everything it seemed. The story retweeted by Kojima, the interview Hung Horst did with the gaming press, everything the gang told us in private, they all left out some key details. In reality, anti new Gang was just a front organization for a campaign of bots, hacking, and misinformation, and the gang itself didn't even know. Only Hung Horst and his top men knew fact from fiction. So let's rewind back to when the world was locking down in the wake of the coronavirus. Hung Horse really did start a nuclear abolition campaign with the purest of intentions, and wanted to do it legit, but even after building an army of 100 peacekeepers, they could barely make a dent in the nuke count. From May to June, they had only managed to get it down from 850 to 800. They were literally shooting BBs at a freight train. The problem was actually threefold. The first issue was a rule change by Konami. Nuclear weapons don't have an offensive purpose. You can't destroy enemy FOBs with them or anything like that. They only serve as a deterrence by giving nuclear armed players a blockade that makes it difficult for anyone else to invade their base. Originally, you could invade somebody's base to try and steal their nukes every few hours, but a couple months after the game launched, Konami issued a game-breaking update. The first time Konami announced the official nuke count on each server, it showed that they were actually dropping like flies. In November alone, console gamers already disarmed 87% of all nuclear weapons, and it looks like Konami didn't want people achieving peace too quickly, or maybe at all. So they rewrote the rules before the philanthropist could win the day. It's kind of complicated, but to explain in simple terms, instead of a few hours, the update made it so that each nuke could give only one full day of a blockade. So let's say somebody had a maximum of 16 nukes, they could actually only be invaded once every 16 days. Now the second problem was finding which players even had nukes. The game's nuke tab is pretty much broken, so you kind of have to refresh over and over again to find a nuclear armed player. And if someone with nukes hasn't logged in a while, they actually stop showing up on the tab entirely, so they're near impossible to find. And the third major problem is just how ridiculously easy it is to cheat and give yourself free nukes. It's supposed to take a huge amount of in-game resources, and about 24 in-game hours to build one nuke. They're not cheap. To build a bunch of nukes, even if you've already hoarded the resources and left your PS3 logged on non-stop, it's supposed to take weeks. But with cheat, 60 nukes can be acquired instantaneously. So even just one cheater can make disarmament virtually impossible, giving themselves 60 nukes over and over in the 16-day blockades that come with them. But there's a lot more than just one cheater. Around the time the anti-nuke gang was facing the reality of these insurmountable obstacles, a mysterious hacker named Stefferp showed up in the gang's Discord. He created a bot to help locate all the nukes with the click of one button. The bot would search every player's base and identify which ones were in possessions of nuclear weapons. Here's footage of it working in real time. But Steph, the mad scientist that he is, grew more ambitious and eventually transformed his reconnaissance bot into a fully autonomous nuke destroyer. He dubbed it the Nuke Hunter Deluxe. And after identifying a player in possession of nukes, in a split second it would log onto their Metal Gear account, destroy their own nukes, and vanish without a trace. He offered his services to the gang, who, after some discussion, accepted it. Many of these conversations were later covered up and deleted so no one would ever find them, especially the gaming press who came sniffing around after they had achieved disarmament. Hung Horse and his top guys knew what was happening, but the lower level gang members and the new recruits were kept in the dark. Steph's bot made short work of the remaining 800 nukes, whittling them down to just about 40 in under a week. All that was left was the phantom nukes. Now here's footage of what that actually looked like. There's no base invasion, not even any gameplay, the Nuke Hunter Deluxe searches the entire database of players, finds a nuke, logs onto the owner's account, and immediately destroys it. Blockades are bypassed entirely. It all happens in a split second. We actually have to slow down this footage so you can see a nuke getting destroyed before the bot moves into its next target. According to Steph, if Konami checked his player profile, all they'd see is the most motivated base invader in the world. While all this was going 
going on, everyone outside the top circle was made to believe the Righteous Crusade was finally working, as the new count grew ever closer to zero. But really, they were just a cover story for Steph's campaign of botting and hacking. It was Steph himself who eventually told Did You Know Gaming the truth, and when we asked why he resorted to cheating instead of doing it legit, he sent us this. I'm no hero. Never was. Never will be. Did you know Gaming pressed for a better explanation and he just said, I just think that it sucks that Konami never communicates with the players about anything. We all try to get them to acknowledge the flaws in the online systems and our disarmament is impossible but they never once commented on it. I know it's technically cheating, but the online part of MGS5 is such a disaster it truly is the only way that event could ever have happened. All the holes in MGS5 security and anti-cheat measures make it practically impossible to achieve disarmament and even if the gang somehow managed to beat the stack deck, the Phantom Nukes would always be the ace on bottom and prevent the new count from ever reaching zero. So yeah, basically it's all rigged. Konami clearly put their thumb on the scale with the beefier blockades, but a lot of these issues probably weren't intentional on their part. The nuke tab isn't broken because Konami wanted it that way, and the anti-cheat measures aren't a joke because Konami likes cheaters. It seems they just didn't care enough to fix it. And we don't want to assign malicious intent, but the argument could certainly be made that Konami's fine with these issues existing, because they're happy the status quo of peace never being achieved. Did you know Gaming asked Steph why he'd finally come clean after all this time, almost two years later. He said sticking to the original story never got them what they wanted, so they might as well come out with the truth. Did the gang's leaders really believe in their own cause? Steph's pretty pessimistic if disarmament would even unlock anything at all, saying, I do think the original plan was to give people a substantial reward after disarmament was achieved, namely chapter 3 whatever it may have been. But because of the troubled development in Kojima Productions getting the boot, I think they just gave up on it entirely. Maybe half-finished files are sitting on Konami Def's PC somewhere. I mean, who knows? Hung Horse was similarly pessimistic. He wants to believe something big is hiding behind Konami's investigation, but suspects all their hints might have just been a cynical ploy to drive engagement. He said, I want to believe it's something big, but I personally think the hype surrounding disarmament helps give the game the attention it needs to get more people playing it again. That may even be the only reason it even exists, meaning that disarmament is just a metagame of sorts, and it's only meant to be treated as such. I mean, this is a game about chasing phantoms after all, and this is Kojima we're talking about. It really might be nothing but a massive troll. Or the reward for disarmament was originally meant to be something grand, something big. But after Konami and Kojima's falling out, it got downgraded to something much smaller. One popular theory is that players will receive a Hideo Kojima emblem in their profile as a reward. The other 29 emblems can be acquired through normal online play, but the last one so far has remained unattainable with Konami never revealing how players are meant to unlock it. Another theory has to do with an unwatchable video on Konami's official website. The site has 35 videos called Vlogs for fans to watch, but a mysterious 36 video is still off limits and labeled classified, which some fans believe will get unlocked when a legit disarmament happens. Some believe it's a congratulatory video, possibly from Kojima himself, there are tons of fan theories out there and entire subreddits dedicated to theorizing about it, but no one's really known what will happen if a legitimate disarmament ever happens. So in an effort to find out what's really behind the curtain, we decided to ask Konami directly. We had a contact at Konami PR for a while, not a leaker or anything like that, just a regular old public relations manager. We talked before, but when we started asking questions about disarmament, they ignored our email. So then we reached out to Robert Peeler, we mentioned him earlier in this video, he was Metal Gear's community manager up until 2018 and the guy who ran the official Metal Gear Twitter account. He's actually one of the main people hinting about Chapter 3, so we'd asked if he'd be willing to share what he'd known, and he told Did You Know Gaming, I think Konami's being strict about it just comes down to respecting the design. The idea being that it's very hard to be a fully nuclear disarmed ecosystem, just like it's hard to be a fully nuclear disarmed society. Metal Gear has often presented these themes, and I speculate the team wanted players to consider the matter very seriously, going so far as to reward them if, and only if, they truly achieve peace. He's pretty vague throughout our entire conversation. He doesn't work for Konami anymore, but he's still in the community management business, so it's understandable he wouldn't want to put his career in jeopardy by spilling too many beans. When we asked Point Blank if there was really nothing but an attaboy on the other side of the Konami investigation, he said, Possibly. I'd love to say for sure, but since I don't work with them anymore, I can't say for certain what they'll do. Maybe nothing? Well, I think much of the team from the game still works there. 
I hope they have plans in mind for Metal Gear even today. I mean, they did when I left, there's certainly a possibility, but definitely not a guarantee. If I was still there, I'd demand we do something big, lol. But not my call, winky face. Now while that was enlightening, it wasn't the concrete yes or no we're looking for. So then we asked Asim Tanvir, who took over as Metal Gear Community Manager in 2018. But he said Konami didn't even keep him in the loop on their plans if peace was ever achieved. So we decided to email the man himself, Hideo Kojima. Way back in 2014, we were invited to interview him in Japan about Metal Gear Solid 5. So we figured it was worth the shot to see if he'd answer some questions about disarmament, the Phantom Nukes, and if there was really anything to unlock. He didn't email us back. But he made a tweet later the same day, which might have just been coincidental timing, but Kojima hadn't tweeted about disarmament in years, so we like to think it was his way of responding in his trademark mysterious fashion. Whether or not that's the case, he tweeted out one short sentence. This was a social experiment. Robert Peeler told us it's as close as anyone's ever gotten to a direct answer from him. But what does it mean? After weeks investigating disarmament, we still don't have a definitive answer to this big question. But now we know why peace has never been achieved, and why it'll probably never be achieved. Most of the anti-nuke gang were left completely in the dark about the Nuke Hunter Deluxe, so this video is going to be their first time hearing the truth, that they actually did cheat, and it wasn't just to disarm those last 40 Phantom Nukes. After we concluded our months-long investigation, Hung Horse told us, By now, you know that my group was pretty much just a cover story for Steph's action. But I hope that you will at least remember that there was a legitimate effort with members trying to dismantle nukes, besides Steph, behind the curtain. And that this legacy I left behind is a real Kojima-esque move in and of itself. As for Steph, he'd given up on the search for peace, but not before setting his bot loose on a few other servers, destroying tens of thousands more nukes just for the fun of it and as a bit of an F you to Konami. They're shutting down the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 servers on May 31st, and someday, all the other servers as well. Most of the anti-nuke gangs disbanded, and what's left of them hope Konami will fix the game-breaking bugs before the Day of Reckoning ever arrives, even though most of that hope has already been beaten out of them. Maybe there's something really awesome laying in wait, but at this point it seems likely that the reward for disarmament is nothing. Still though, many of them have spent years fighting for a nuke-free world. The stories focus mostly on the anti-nuke gang, but there are thousands of more fans. The philanthropists, Never Be Game Over, and countless others who have given huge chunks of their life to this cause. All they want is a real chance to achieve peace. A legitimate peace that'll make Kojima proud. I mean, even if it's all for nothing but a title card. Did you also know Kojima wanted to let Snake name individual rats and keep them as pets in Metal Gear Solid 1? And hey, in Metal Gear Solid 3 he wanted to add a radio station of him and his team singing karaoke so poorly that it drained your health, but couldn't because they were short on disk space. For a full half hour of MGS Cut content hosted by David Hayter himself, click the video on screen. Did you know gaming has another Metal Gear video in the works, so subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. And thank you to Robert Peeler for proofreading the script for accuracy along with a few others who aided in our investigation. This is your host Mudahar, and I'm glad that you've all tuned in, hope you all enjoyed yourself, and uh, if you want to check me out, my uh, YouTube channel is Some Ordinary Gamers. And again, a big thanks to Did You Know Gaming. Thank you for watching.